Good morning, friends of IP Service World 2023. Dear friends, dear colleagues, my name is Marcus Badenbecker. I'm working for BMW and I'm your host in this session and try to moderate best way possible uh, what we're about to hear. Please allow me to present to you our two esteemed speakers here. First one in alphabetical order. First one is Daniel Ovadia. Um, Daniel is a computer scientist by training, an entrepreneur by experience, and a manager by action. Being an inventor and patent en engineer himself, Daniel is a seasoned innovator with over 20 years of experience in the world of patents and IP. Throughout his career, Daniel has worn many hats from co-founding a startup that secured an EU patent in software to spearheading cross-border business development for cutting-edge products. Since 2014, he's been on a mission to help innovative companies fast-track their innovation and patenting process with primary focus on uh, Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. Uh, Daniel is dedicated to shaping the future of technology at Castell. As a specialist in analytics solutions, he's actively involved in the development of new features and um, continually enhances patent services. Daniel, thank you for being here. The next expert I would like to announce is Thomas Spernert. Thomas is physicist by training, works in the IP field for more than 20 years now. In this time period, he played a pivotal role in a number of prestigious companies such as Siemens, Rolls-Royce Rolls uh, Power Systems, and Knorr Bremse. Since 2016, which is quite a while actually now, Thomas is head of IP at Ureas, one of the oldest family businesses you can find in the world, actually. And uh, in this position, he's leading a team of some 20 IP experts who are located in Germany, the US, and in China. Daniel and Thomas will explain to us how Herias increased efficiency and saved 500,000 euros per year in international filing in cooperation with Castell. So, gentlemen, um, this is a very significant number, and uh, please tell us how you do that. Thank you very much, and thanks for this kind introduction. Good morning, everybody. Um, first of all, I would like to introduce uh, Herr Reus to you. Who of you know Herr Reus? By show of hands. Oh, that's quite a lot. Ah, that's good. Anyway, let's get started. I will start with a few slides on Herr Reus, and I promise you, not so much detail as for Thyssen Krupp. <laughs> so relax. It's a um, company which has a long history, as you can see. It was founded in the 17th century as a pharmacy. Nowadays, it's a big industrial company with 17,000 employees worldwide, quite diversified, which is also part of the um, reason that IP filing can be quite challenging with the global footprint all around the world and still family-owned. Here's an overview of what we do. Uh, Business-wise, we have around about 17,000 employees, which are located in many locations worldwide. We are organized in 20 what we call operating companies, which are independently organized units, which have very dedicated in different business fields. And to give you an idea of what we do is, here are a few photographs of things that we are doing. Bone cement, for example, implants and catheters, something in quartz glass, then silver paste for solar cells, metal ceramic substrates, precious metals, and sensors. And all of these things are more or less related to the origin of Rios, which is in precious metals. In some cases, you don't see the direct relation, but it's all in there. For example, the sensors, they contain a platinum wire for measuring temperature in molten steel, for example. Um, that's it for getting started. And with this, I hand over to you, Daniel. Thank you, Thomas. So also from my side, uh, a warm welcome. It's always a big pleasure to be back in my hometown Munich and at IP Service World, my favorite IP conference. Um, he started asking, who knows Hereos? Who knows Questel? Better than you. Um, 
So still, for those who didn't raise their hands, um, a short overview about, about Questel, who we are. And I always say, if you want to know where you go, you have to look where you come from. So uh, originally, we come from a uh, spin-off from France Telecom. Uh, you see, we're pretty old, 78, uh, from 1978 already, and independent since 2001. We started off with the patent database business that most of you probably know us from, uh, our main product, Orbit, to search and analyze patent data. Since then, a lot has happened. Uh, we've acquired quite a lot of companies because um, the market situation is like either you eat someone or you get eaten um, with the current situation on the market. So we decided to become a big fish in the pot. And in fact, we are today, of course, an EU company, a headquarters in Paris, but our biggest personal hub is in my hometown, Munich. We'll get into a bit of more details on that in a second. Of course, we also have an international footprint now. We not only have client services and sales, but also production all around the world. And this does not include our agents. This is just really production and service offices that we provide uh, for companies like Careers or others who need also support in place for different reasons. So what do we do? Um, let's keep it short. Let's start with the beginning, the innovation. Thanks to uh, the company in Ozerby that we have acquired here in Munich, we provide today, for example, the innovation backbone and complete ecosystem for Siemens, but also smaller entities, smaller startups. This can go from ideation to open innovation and everything in between. We have the business unit of trademarks, where we provide full services around trademarks, including, if necessary, full representation on the trademark business, even possible with flat fee systems. And last but not least, our origins, the patent business, where we are today number one IP translator and IP filer worldwide. Just to give you an idea, 10% of all patents coming out from the US international come go over our table. And that's exactly the point that we are going to speak now about our filing and translation business and how this can help you to save significant amounts of money. Thank you. Thank you. I already told you about Hereus and how we are internationally set up. And this also reflects in our patent filings. So these are the patent filings from 2013 to 2020. And only the top 10 for Europe and non-European countries are covered here. But you can see that's the challenge that we are facing. We don't have the highest number of first filings, but we do have a wide scope of different countries that we have to file in. And this is, again, just the, the top of the iceberg. And for a um, um, mid-sized team, that can be challenging to handle. And that's why in the past, and until 2021, we primarily relied on one external attorney under what we call in German Vollvertretung. So one external attorney doing the drafting and handling and managing all the subsequent filings worldwide. That works. It's quite convenient. It's efficient, let's say. But of course, it comes at a cost. And that's the money we pay for it, because every invoice, so every, every uh, office action, any kind of communication has to pass two hands, and both hands also open up to get cash from us. So it works, it's rather efficient, but it's also rather expensive as well. We did also do some in-house drafting, and for those cases, we did do the local filing ourselves. Sorry, that was the wrong key. That's the right one. We did the filing ourselves, and then for subsequent filings, we managed the cases ourselves. That's, of course, an ideal system because you have a high in-house contribution, but it's difficult to scale up because we are a small team, and it's hard to justify additional staff to, hand to handle this 100%. So how can we solve that solution? And the solution is here shown on the right-hand side and came with the help of Castell. For First filings, nothing changes. It's all like we did it before when we did the drafting ourselves. So all the local filing, mostly at the EPO, at the German Patent Office, are done by us locally with our team who can directly file at the EPO, for example. We still cannot draft all the patents ourselves, but now we only rely on substantive support 
from outside attorney for patent drafting, for example. But the formal part is then handled by our team. So that's an additional value contribution by our team and less expensive outside support. For international filings, we could scale this up based on the fact that Castell was able to provide this um, as a one-stop shop. So all the foreign filings, all the requests are being sent to just one email address and uh, Castell takes care of all the rest. So the translations are being done by them, they have a cost-efficient translation service and then they coordinate all the subsequent filings with their network of local national attorneys. And then, once the filing has been done, so they take only care of the filing process, once the filing date is um, established, it's being handed over to our own outside law firms who've been working for us for many years and, and who know our substance matter. They know the prior art, they know what we filed before, and they continue the patent prosecution process until the patent is granted. So they come in in a crucial moment of time when uh, we are under time pressure because there is a priority time limit. We may have to file many patents at the same time and they coordinate all the rest and then we continue with our usual attorneys until the grant of the patent. Moment. Just to understand it right, you started with 25% in-house and today you do 100% in-house. Is this correct? Um, yes, again, with some support, that's the orange bubble there, with some support if needed, but we just take that amount of support that for the need. substantive work that we need. For the, for the, for the drafting, but yes. for the filing side, you do know everything from, from in-house. Exactly. But in fact, if you do now like four times more of the work, um, what about your headcount? What happened with that? Uh, that could be kept the same. Right. So for everyone who wants to have, be able to do four times more work with the same headcount, we might have the right solution for you. You can see he's a marketinger, right? <laughs> okay, so, um, right. So the idea was to be able to focus more on the substantive work and rely on Castell to do at least a significant part of the formal work. It only has three buttons, but I still get confused. <laughs> um, I would like to share some of the experiences. So we introduced this two years back and we did have some, some feedback and I would like to share that uh, so that you can also benefit from that. What are the benefits? I try to categorize it in three categories, cost, efficiency and quality. First and primarily, um, Castell has a higher buying power than we do. We file in many countries, so in each country we don't file more than 100 patents, usually with a few exceptions, so we cannot negotiate the best prices around. Castell has many customers and they can negotiate better prices than we could ever imagine. They have a also a competitive translation service which we can benefit, again, in a one-stop shop. And they also provide a cost monitoring service which will, I will go into de more detail uh, on the next slides. But it's not only cost, it's also more efficient for us because, as I mentioned before, it's a one-stop shop. They do all the things uh, at once. We just have to write one email for the entire foreign filing process. And um, it's also significant benefit that we only have a single partner for all the jurisdiction. Keep in mind that we have many countries we file in. In total, I just looked it up. We have 55 outside law firms that we have interact with. So that means 55 different formats of invoices, 55 different formats of reporting the filings, etc. And now we have everything in the same consistent way, and that actually is much easier to process in-house. Um, it also makes us more flexible, because think about you want to implement a process change which involves the outside attorneys. Then you have to communicate with 55 different outside attorneys to get it started. And now if you want to change something in the filing process, we just call Castell, and say we want it this, this, and this way, and they can implement that. For example, we are um, trying to introduce a web portal based on our IP system so that instead of sending out and receiving emails, we will send out and receive messages via this web portal, which is then directly entered into our docketing system, which is quite efficient. And it's now much easier, at least for the part of the filing process, to get this started, because now we only have to contact one um, uh, contact partner. And for some countries, you wouldn't even think about that. Like in Thailand, we file two patents a year. It doesn't make sense to train them at all. So even that part is covered 
via that. So especially if you have a broad spectrum of countries, that is certainly something that at least turns out to be quite efficient for us. We also, based on the experience of the last three years, we did have some changes here in the, pro in the process, and also um, we found out that Castell was quite flexible and responsive to our requests. Given the fact that Castell mostly works on the formal part of the process, we still can work with the same outside attorney regarding the substantial work. So we can still retain that knowledge that is around and that we use for the parts that's really essential, the substantive work of patent drafting and responding to office actions. We also, based on three year experience and also previous benchmarking, found out that the translation quality is good. There, of course, I think in many ways there are some glitches here and there, but it's not more than the usual I've seen in other cases. And whenever there was a case, we call Daniel or someone of his team and there was a solution for that. Right. There's also some challenges. And I think that also comes with the, with the systematic of this approach. Um, and I think it's hard to avoid, but it's something to think about. So if you consider doing that, these are the things that we found out you should keep in mind. First of all, of course, there is an onboarding process. You have to understand how Castell works. They have to understand how we work. What are the messages that they should send on our behalf to our law firms? What information do they need for invoicing, etc.? Whatever you have to do regarding onboarding, that also has to be done here. And I can tell you that Castell also has an onboarding process that works quite well. They don't charge, at least in our case, didn't charge anything for this process, although it was quite tedious, but um, that's well supported. Of course, they also have their own national attorneys to do the filing, so you have to think also about how um, you set up the power of attorneys. So that's something also to keep in mind. Of course, also the external attorneys need to know that they will all of a sudden get emails from Castell asking them to do filings or to continue the filings on our behalf. So that's something you have to communicate. Castell also supports us by sending out predefined um, messages. Also, as I think it's called a client counsel agreement that is being prepared and being sent out. So that's also supported. But of course, here and there, you need to communicate, uh, justify that and explain that and uh, give them some reassurance about their, their work. Uh, I also have to admit, they are not really happy because in the end, you are taking away part of their business didn't cause but much of a trouble. We can still work with the law firms as before, but of course, um, there are some concerns here and there, but it's, in the end, it also works smoothly. Castell will do some minor adjustments for filing, for example, um, reducing multiple dependencies, uh, but not more than that. So if you want to do amendments, either do it before, in the first filing process, or you have to do it during the patent prosecution later on. Um, so that have, have to be kept in mind. Um, initially, I thought it may also be a challenge that there is a handover from Castell's attorney to our attorney. That turns out to be rather smooth. There was no issue at all. It's something that I thought as a new process step might make it more complicated. You could see it as uh, making also the chart more complicated, but in practice that runs rather smoothly. Right. And there are additional benefits which I would like to uh, explain. Um, one also good incentive why we chose Castell for us for doing subsequent filings was that in addition to what I just explained, they also offer a cost monitoring service, something that in this extent we couldn't do with in-house work. And this is how it works. The outside attorneys are being asked to send monthly reports in a predefined format, it's the LEED standard, it's the US e-billing standard, which is supported by all US law firms and most major law firms around the world. So they can do that. And they send out the reports to Castell and Castell analyzes the outcome and notifies us about noteworthy outcomes. For example, certain costs which are excessive or something like, for example, over a certain time period, um, the accumulated costs are uh, outrageous, which if you just saw invoice by invoice would be difficult to identify. Um, that's also good in context of this change of process because 
there was a small risk that I had in mind that if we take away some of the revenue from the outside law firms, they try to make it up by ch charging in some other ways later on in the prosecution process. And by keeping an eye on that via Castell, it's really helping to, to avoid this risk and see that it doesn't happen. There is a benefit that I foresee, which I have not yet leveraged, but I think will be quite important over the next years once we have more detailed information year by year, about, which allows us also to identify where do we actually create costs and how can we bring down the costs? What are the tasks that actually create the highest cost? Is it IDS? Is it whatsoever? And then we can address how we can do that, maybe by negotiating with the outside law firms or just changing our process. Of course, it will also help us to get a better understanding about which law firms are expensive and which ones are not. So selection of law firms, I think, is certainly a benefit I'm looking, in, looking forward to. And the reason why this is best possible, why this lead standard is, depending on how you work in, in your company, um, at least in our company, the invoices are charged and processed only as a total amount. So I cannot even separate between office fees and attorney fees in my reporting. And that, of course, is being done with this cost reporting, and they can even split it down via tasks. So you have a much more deeper understanding about where actually the costs come from and where, is the, where you can actually save costs. Right, there's also an indirect efficiency benefit because before we had the rule that all invoices um, beyond 1,000 euros are being forwarded and only those are being forwarded to the IP Council for a review. Others are being um, reviewed by the IP support team, so the IP paralegal. And now we, based on this additional back um, double checking, we increased that by a factor of two to 2,000, which basically reduces the number of invoices to be reviewed by the, the in-house attorneys by, by half. So that's an additional efficiency benefit. And they also go a one step further. So they also help us to set up a fee schedule, it's something that they worked out um, and established for other companies as well, and it's phase-based. The benefit is they don't just look at a single piece of the invoicing process, but club together certain invoices, which they um, define as a task. So because some law firms may send out invoices broken down quite detailed, and others club them together to make a different impression, and they somehow make it more comparable by defining phases. And they help us to set up certain fixed charges for these phases and roll it out. Um, it is focused on the formal aspect, so they don't compromise anything regarding the substantive work, which is also important for us. And they also helped us to setting it up by actually um, defining certain maximum fees in discussion with us, and then sending out the proposed fee schedules to the law firms and getting them signed. Of course, there are questions here and there, some requests to, to increase the charges, that's also possible, and, but then we could, with the major law firms that we work with, roll out this fee schedule. And it's not only helpful by just defining the fee schedule, given the fact that Castell also monitors the cost, they can even see whether the fee schedule is being met or not. And that's, that's a nice benefit, you just lean back and relax, and Castell complains about um, overcharges for you, and you get the refund without having done anything. And it, that works. It doesn't happen too often because the attorneys also learn, obviously, but um, that, that is also an effect that we benefit from. Right. Um, I don't want to go into detail. This is already a redacted page. It's basically um, a, a table that I created during the selection process. It is original wording, but I reduced it, and I don't want to go into detail, but there's one thing that really held us back from, from um, uh, signing the contract with Castell uh, in the first place, because there is certainly an initial, an initial investment to be done, because you have to do a, an onboarding process, and this process does not work just by testing out a few cases. So you really have to change your process, and then commit for one year and do all your foreign filings in this way. So that's, of course, a big choice you have to make. And that was the one thing that, wa that was flagged internally, of course, that's the wrong button again, flagged internally as being the, the highest obstacle for signing. 
Um, but again, um, what helped us is also get in contact with the existing um, um, existing reference customers, reviewing the contract in detail, discussing how the process works, and once we have this deep insight, we were confident enough to do this leap of faith and signing with Castell, and we didn't forget it the last two years. This is something I did also prior to signing, because that can be easily done, um, given the fact that you can establish some kind of a scenario, how many words do you have per patent applications, what, which are the countries you file in, you can actually calculate what will be the cost benefits in advance. We did do this based on our current fees, and these are ri rather high, also because we let the attorneys translate. And that, of course, can be quite expensive, as you can see, and we could achieve a high cost benefit for translations via Castell. Of course, there are also others around which we looked into, but uh, Castell was quite competitive here as well. Right. And that's actually a conservative estimation because I only looked into the most Im important country, uh, countries in this case. Uh, we also asked Castell to take over our EP validation. We did have a good solution for that, but um, why not take everything from one hand, makes it easier for us, and also it was able then to um, get a better package deal from Castell for our benefit. And this is the outcome over the last two years. No, actually, this is only for one year. So I assume for this year we have the same outcome, maybe even higher. We estimate that we in total could save more than half a million um, per year. 200,000 only indirectly linked to Castell because we are just not using full external representation, full Vertretung anymore. But again, the change was enabled by Castell. And 300,000 directly just based on the fact that Castell is charging lower costs than our patent, external patent attorneys have charged before. And the breakdown by country is as, as this, as you can see. For, for this section on the left-hand side, the 400,000 is broken down like this. And especially for the Asian countries, you could uh, save a significant amount of money via filing via Castell, but also in the US. Maybe again to point out, it's easy to stop having high full representation uh, costs, but then you have to work in-house. What's nice here is that we're able to save 200,000 of full representation costs without a higher workload on the team. Again, the team stayed stable over the time. There was no increase in headcount, uh, and you saw this, the filing numbers. We speak about significant numbers of filing. Uh, without uh, a correct support like we were able to provide, we would not have been able to do that in-house without increasing the headcount. So even if the 200,000 come by saving out of the, uh, out of the, the full representation, without having the support from our side, there would have been a counterpart with additional paralegals, and you all know how much a paralegal costs in Germany, I'm um, not sure that it would have been so beneficial. I think, I hope you agree on that. <laughs> Thank you. Right. And that's actually already the end of the core part of my presentation. I wanted to show you a few examples from a practice. So these are actually screenshots later on. I think that's the next page. Yeah. Uh, screenshots from actual emails, just to give you an idea about how this looked in practice. Because initially, when I heard about the service, it was difficult for me to imagine how this is actually in established in practice. So this is an email, um, how the handover is being done from Castell to our local law firm. So that's the point in time when the, the Castell has done the filing, and then our local law firm takes over. And they send out an email CCing us, that's the IP department, and also then directly addressing the outside law firm. And then they have a standard format of reporting about the filing. For every country, the same here, it's Mexico. And we just take over the details in our IT system based on, on this kind of email. In the future, actually, Questel will enter this directly into our web portal. But for the time being, we we'll live with this kind of, uh, of reporting, which is in this unified, for unified format. Um, the right-hand part is actually the lower end of the email, and that is something that we told Castell to include, because, um, of course, the request from Castell is directly coming from Castell to our national attorney, 
but they need additional information, sometimes more details for the inventors, depending on the requirements for each country, more details for the invoicing, and this is provided here in detail. And here is an example. This actually happened while I was making, uh, preparing this kind of presentation, and this I noticed, uh, that's why I just took this example. We found out we wanted to do a process change, because the level of detail in the old version on the right-hand side um, was not sufficient, and we asked them to include more detail, as you can see, in this kind of format. So we, when we send this email to Castell, we include this, and they take it over and send it out to, to their law, for law firms, to our law firms, for um, providing this information so that they can actually invoice us correctly and less mistakes happen. And based on this email, um, Again, this just happened by incidence. Same day I made this presentation, 35 minutes I later I got a response, and the change was implemented soon thereafter. And that's, I have seen that from other providers less fast, so that's something I want to find out. This is how the monthly report looks like. It's an Excel format, and this is one piece of it. So it's broken down. You can see our case number in this case. Here's this kind of phase. In this case, the phase is actually just one task. And um, then there is a description, which I think probably is semi-automatic, but also edited by an attorney working for Castell. And they give some advice about uh, what actually happened. And in this case, they also point out this happened three times. This is an overcharge which they couldn't get, ask for a refund because at this point of time when the invoice was being written, the fee schedule was not yet in place. And this is the description that is provided in this leads format from our local law firm to Castell, and they take this over in this report. And sometimes it's actually just one line, sometimes it's 20 lines relating to a certain, certain phase. Last but not least, I think we are good in time. Um, this is an example of how a refund from a local law firm works. So they send out an email, they inform us by CCing us, but otherwise it's done completely automatic and uh, without any interference from us. So they ask them to, to look into the overcharge. In this case, the, there was an overcharge of 270 US dollars for something, I think, for a grant in Korea. And that's something that we later on also really got as a refund because of this overcharge, and they had signed the fee schedule in advance. Thank you. Yeah, fantastic. So this is a great business model, I think, and um, being outside council, I would think I would kind of get nervous. <laughs> um, do we have any questions from the audience here? Okay. Um, one housekeeping rule, if you have a question, please wait for the mic, state your name and the name of a company, so those can, online, being online can benefit from your side. Okay, uh, good morning, my name is Jenny Escobar from GKK MPH. Uh, my question would be, like, of course it works like the savings for a company that files 1,000 patents in average per year where will be high. But does it work as well for companies filing between 20 and 50 um, patents per year or with a country scope of 5 to 10 uh, countries? Or this would be more an economy of scale, of economy scale thing? <coughs> I take this one. Um, in fact, one important point that what, all what you saw is we only invoice for the translation and filings. So the whole service about the, the fee schedule, verifying the invoices, um, re re really reducing the costs, we do not charge. There were some discussions, maybe we could offer that as a service, and then we said, oh, you want to go and say, hey, I'm going to save you next year 500,000, but you have to pay 200,000 up front. Doesn't work. So um, the simple idea is, when we won't be able to provide this charge, we need a minimum amount of volume to be able to cover our expenses, because you can imagine that there's a lot of work behind specifically on verifying the invoices and the other additional services that you have just seen that we provide. So in the end, when you speak about 30 to 50 filings, the question is what we speak about. If it's first filings and then you go to three to four countries, yes, it can work out completely. If it's 
extension filings, it will be a bit difficult. Then we have other ways of working together. We still we can save you money, but we need a minimum amount um, for this to be able to work, including the full service, because we have to cover the expenses that we have on the other side. But in general, how many did we do together last year? Here, 200? Filings? 24 and filings? And the first filings we have is about 100 and 120. And so the secondary were? A factor of 10, maybe. I, I'm not sure, I have to look it up. So, so it was, was, was a quite nice amount, a huge amount of filings. But in general, we say if you speak about 100, 150 foreign filings, there's in general a way that we can speak together. Maybe even a bit less, it depends the whole situation. Yeah, um, just to point out, first of all, um, I can speak freely here. I'm not paid for this, so I'm just saying that because uh, I think I would like to share this. So I think uh, I would imagine that depending on the volume, of course, uh, the, the, the rates that you get may vary. Um, but it's maybe some, something to look into. Yeah, for now. Hello, Gregor Schneider from Eaton. Um, can you expand a little bit more on the process after the foreign filing? So you said uh, the foreign filing is done by the Quest to preferred associate in the US, for example, and then it goes back to the Areos preferred associate. So also the work goes back to your colleagues then in your team, I guess. Yeah, exactly. But yes. the billing then goes still to Quest. Yeah, interesting fact. One? Yeah, that's um, I, I forgot to really highlight that. So the Filing process, so what Castell does, ends at the when the filing date is established, basically. And then it's handed over to our attorneys, and then it goes as usual, right? And so our in-house attorneys are addressed, they respond to the national attorneys, and it's just the old world. Um, but in addition, in parallel, Castell continues to monitor the costs until the grant. And that's something without extra costs, it's included in the package. Any more questions from the audience here, present in this room? Okay, do we have any online questions? No, we don't. Well, then, I would like to thank you very much. It's a highly interesting business model again. So I'm uh, very interested to move in your booth in any event. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>